1 Peter, in that verse we read in 1 Peter uh, 5, 8, it goes on to say in verse 9, Who resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. Yes. It says, uh, be well balanced, temperate, yes. sober of mind, yes. be vigilant. That means keeping careful watch yes. for possible danger. Because, and cautious at all times, because that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Withstand him. Yes. Be firm in faith Jason. against his onset. Jason. Rooted, established, strong, immovable, yes. and determined. Yes. Knowing that that same identical suffering is appointed to your brotherhood throughout the world. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against him. So all you have to do is resist the enemy. Yes. Resist him. We say it all the time. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yes. But that's only if you don't allow it. Amen. Because there's no power in his weapons. There's no authority in his weapons. But the power comes when we secede. We who have been given all power and all authority in Christ. The power comes when we secede to him and when we, we allow him to take advantage. When we allow him to come and to spread his lies. It's like a traveling salesman selling his goods. Selling his wares that are only profitable for a limited time only. And when it's all said and done, there's no getting your money back. There's no refunds with him. Because once he catches you, when he steals something from you, he has no desire to give it up. Amen. But when he comes, we need to pull out our sword, yes. which is the word of God. For now, when we talked about Paul, if we were to back up a few verses, it tells us how to withstand the enemy. He tells us that finally, my brethren, be strong Amen. in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. Church, today is the day when we must stand against the wiles of the enemy. Today is the day when we must stand against all the lies that he brings and all, all the confusion that he tries to wreak and the havoc that he brings to our lives. This is how we stand by this word, as James told us, by submitting ourselves, therefore, unto God. We must submit ourselves to the Lord and to apply this word to our lives. For you can't submit yourself and walk contrary to this word. You cannot submit yourself and walk contrary to this word. For if you walk contrary to this word, you have no power because that means you are not in Christ. If you're walking contrary to the word, it means that you have no power because you're not in Christ. For everything, if Christ has all power, in order to have access to that power, you have to be in Christ. Everything else is predicated on being in Christ. So if the devil comes to you and you have no power, well, he'll tear you up like he did the sons of Sceva. Yeah. Why? Because they had no power. Right. Because they didn't. They were used in this world as something casual, but they, they didn't have the name applied to their lives. Right. Church, contrary, that means if you have the name of Jesus applied to your life and you are in Christ, that means you have the power. Yeah. You have the power to be able to stand. You have the ability to stand against the evil and against the enemy and be able to stand right. in that day. Amen. But you can't sit down when the enemy comes your way. You can't sit down like a whip on the sidelines and expect that he'll just go away on his own. This takes a fight. Yes. But remember, just as with the children of Israel, the fight was fixed. Mm. See, it's one thing to enter into a fight that you're not sure if you're going to win. Because yes. then you get scared. You, 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 your, your mind's all messed up. But when you enter into a fight that you know you're already going to win, That's right. you have a certain air of confidence. That's right. You have an air of confidence because you know that, you know what? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Yes. Right. This battle is already in the bag. I might have to go through some, it might be a little difficult. I might have to, to, to take off my boxing gloves. But victory is already mine. That's right. All I know I have to do is just endure this and to get That's through right. it. And I know that victory is already mine. That's I wish right. that someone would understand that victory is already yeah. ours because the yeah. Lord has already promised it. But that doesn't mean that it comes easy. That doesn't mean that it comes for nothing. Because as we said, it is a fight. Yeah. 
Yes. But the Lord has already promised. Yes. The Lord has already ordained. The Lord has already made a way. All we have to do is show that we're willing to receive it. Exactly. We're willing to work for it. Because like we said before, the Lord is not trying to raise some spoiled children where we just have everything that we want. As if we're entitled to it. But the Lord is saying, let me see you work for it a little bit. Let me see you put some energy into it and work for this salvation, to work for this which I've already paid the price for. Ah, right. Lord, I thank you, dear Jesus, for the Lord has already paid the price. It's there for the taking. All we have to do is go up and possess and contend Brothers for battle. Yes. My God, why don't we just give the Lord some praise right now? Why don't we worship and thank you for the fighting for the We need to use the word of God to fight our enemy. For this word, which Paul goes on to say, is the sword of the, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We use it to, when we pray. When you pray, you want to pray using the word, for that is your sword. For if the Lord already said it, then it's already done. It's that sword that we need to use to break down strongholds. Because the enemy cannot handle the truth. Yes. The enemy cannot handle the truth. So when you gird your loins with truth and say, devil, I'm not tripping over your lies, he can't do anything. He can't do anything because he is defenseless. Right. But you still got to fight. Amen. You still got to fight. We sang that song last week that I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. But if you're on the battlefield and you're not fighting, then you're dead. Amen. If you're on the battlefield and you're just standing with the sword in your hands and you don't know how to use it, the enemy is going to come and knock your head off. That's right. Not because he has power, but because you've allowed it. Because you put yourself in a position to be killed. But we ought to submit if we want that power. If we want that power to be able to overcome. For the Lord says that we are more than overcomers. Yes. If we want that power to be able to overcome, then we need to submit ourselves to God. Yes. For he is the commander. Yes. He is the one with the battle plan. He is the commander in chief. And he's fought many a war and never lost a battle yet. Yes. You are on the winning side if you are in God. Because yes. he has never lost a battle yet. And I'm here to tell you that he never will. Yes. So if you want to win. If you want to overcome your enemy. Stay in God. Stay in Christ. Stay in your word. Continue to submit yourself to him. For you see, sometimes the strategies that the Lord implores are a bit confusing. Sometimes we don't always understand the strategies that the Lord yes. employs. For Joshua, we were talking about Joshua earlier, he was a man of war. He was a man of battle. When there was a war, he was ready with a sword drawn to fight. But when the Lord said, you know what, go and march around the walls of Jericho. That was an unusual strategy. That, wasn't, that, that didn't maybe jive with what Joshua knew about battle. But one thing he knew about battle is that if you're not with your commander, you're lost. Amen. Yes. If you're not following the one who's in charge of you, then you're lost. See, the Canadian forces, when you go into the forces, they sort of, I don't want to call it mind washing, but in a sense, that's what it is. Because they train you to follow your commander. No matter what your commander says, that's what you must do. And even if you don't agree with it, even if you don't understand it, that's what you've got to do. Right. You know, I'll give you a short story. My, uh, my current boss that we have, she was a, she was a military woman. And, you know, in our office, we're a bunch of uh, English majors, free thinkers, so we like to kind of do things our own way. And so when she came in, it was havoc. Why? Because we're used to doing things our own way, and, you know, we work very independently, and we work well at that. But all of a sudden, she implemented some rules and some, some directions. And I remember, as I was a supervisor at the time, she says, whatever I do, back me up. Whatever I do and whatever I say, you've got my back. You may not agree with it, you may not like it, but I'm your supervisor, I'm in charge, and so whatever I say, you back me up. Now, we don't like that, because we don't like to be told what to do necessarily. But the Lord is saying, I am your commander. I am your leader. I am the one with the battle plan. I know you don't always understand, and that's okay. I'm not asking you to understand everything that I'm telling you to do, but I am asking you to follow. I am asking you to obey. I am asking you to heed the words that I'm giving you, because if you do, you'll have success. If you do, you'll win the battle. But if you go contrary to the battle plan, your hand is in your life is in your own hands. And if you know that none of us can fight a battle and be on our own. Alright, maybe you don't know that, so let me tell you. If you're fighting a battle and you're by yourself, you're going to lose. That's right. This is why when, when the armies go out, they go out in troops. That's right. They go out with their commander, they go with troops. Because they know if someone's feeling a little weak, there's someone beside them saying, Come on, brother, you can make it. Come on now, you, you can make it.